Hey everyone, welcome to Wild Woodland Lavender Farm. This is day eight of my June on the Farm series. And this morning has been kind of a rainy one. It's not raining right now and it looks like maybe not for the rest of the day. Uh, I don't know what project I'm gonna be working on today because the ground is kind of wet from all the rain. Uh, so planting stuff might get uh, kind of a dirty mess. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of walk around and see what I can get doing today. Um, I have beautiful flowers out right now, so I took some shots of those and I'll probably take a few more to share with you guys. One thing I have been doing is there's some roses out in the front that have a terrific aroma to them and they're beautiful. Um, they have a bright color and so when I dry them, they kind of get just this nice color for being a dried rose and they keep their fragrance and last year I dried a whole bunch of them and I'm planning to add them to like a lavender rose, maybe lavender rose lemon balm tea, something like that. So I have already picked some roses to dry and I took some shots of that for you so you can see. Um, other than that, we're just gonna kind of walk around and see what there is to do that I can do with the ground being so wet. Um, so yesterday I was able to get some tomatoes planted and unfortunately my camper battery ran down and I wasn't able to get things finished. Um, so I will have to continue planting tomatoes another time. So let's just kind of go around and see what's going on otherwise. Well, here's an update on the sweet potatoes. You can see they have kept their vigor. They are not wilting at all and they're just growing fabulously. So these are gonna be some good vigorous plants in here. And it almost looks like we have some radish or something popping up right there. So that'll be cool to have in here. There's some more over there. People are, keep an eye on those. But yeah, these are growing nicely. It looks like we even have some new growth on those. A couple weeks ago, I was actually able to plant some iris. These are some iris plants that I brought with me from our old house. And I just planted them here at the edge of the no-till garden amidst all the sunflowers. And then, of course, here's the black locust trees. So it'll be nice to have some iris there. And I actually just found another pot of iris that I need to get planted as well. So I need to figure out where to plant those. You can see the sunflower have grown, grown up really tall, overcoming the onions right there, if you can see them mixed in. Here in the no-till garden are the MI Gardener's Crimson Giant, Giant Crimson tomatoes. And you can see they're starting to get blossoms and they're growing nicely. And here are some of the peppers and here's that lettuce that I had seen. Well, over here on this side, we have some more lettuces right there and there. Nice to have those coming up from seed that I did not plant. Oh, look over here. There's another lettuce there. Back there, there's a whole bunch of lettuce in here. That's a, a lot of that is lettuce. I see some plantain in there. Right here is a plantain, which is edible and medicinal. Not a bad thing to have in the garden at all. There's chickweed, also edible, but undesirable. <laughs> in my garden anyway. So, and then we have some, some, uh, some of those flowers of <laughs> poppies. There we go. And some sunflower popping up. This is unfortunately in the pathway. So I <laughs> guess we'll be eating stuff out of there to clear it out. But the peppers are doing well. They haven't been planted very long. So of course they're not going to have too much growth, but nice to see the tomato plants growing well. And then down here, this is the peach tree that I found and I'm pretty sure it's grown quite a bit since I last showed it on here. That's good. Look at that, it's even grown up through the tomato hoop that I have here. <laughs> Of 
Take a look at the sweet potatoes back here. Well, these aren't doing so well. I didn't get them watered as much as they should have probably. That one and this one don't seem to be doing well. That one there, but this one and that one are good. That one and that one are doing okay. But yeah, I don't think these got watered as well as they should have. It's until now they have the rain. <laughs> So I'll have to make sure to come out here and get these watered more often. And there's some horseradish that I did not plant. Horseradish. I didn't plant that and I've tried to dig it up several times. And of course, if there's anything left in the ground, it will continue to grow. So I'm just going to have a continual source of horseradish, I guess. Planted in a container, not in the ground. Just a piece of advice. And you can see the grapevines are getting uh long here and they're starting to grow up the grape arbor that brent made and look at that it's training around the branches on there so cool i'm gonna push this one over here give that a chance to grow up there as well oh that's so neat to see growing get this one trained up over there too There's this right here. This is actually, excuse me, Pugsy. Uh, this is actually rooted right there. And so that's going to have to come out. I'll ask if any of my friends want it. I actually have a couple uh, places where it's um, rooted to the ground from the old vine. And it started growing new plants there. Uh-oh, looks like, you know, Puggy. Thank you. Thank you for moving. So some of these vines got detached somehow. That's too bad. <clears throat> Probably when I was in here looking for strawberries, it got stepped on or something. So, oh, oops, and now I just pulled that one off. Well, that's too bad. I wonder what's going on with my rhubarb over here. I don't understand these red leaves. I've never, never seen that with rhubarb before at least not not while they're producing I wonder what's going on does anybody know I'll have to do some research otherwise but if anybody knows what's going on with the red leaves like that uh, please let me know I just don't know we've got the one lavender bush that was planted here before we moved here, it's starting to bloom. So that'll be nice to have some fresh cut lavender this year. I'm surrounded by greenness out here. This is lemon balm. And let me smell this. Yep, that's peppermint. I'll have to come harvest that. That's, those, that's some nice looking leaves there. Definitely have to come and harvest some of that. And this is a sage. It's gone to gone to seed here. Still need to come through here and clean out this chard. And give me some more room to plant. There's a whole bunch in here that needs to be cleaned out here. And then there's some baby um, cabbage that I never got transplanted. So we'll see how that's doing at some point. Mm, catnip. I just think all the poppies mixed through here are so pretty. Even though they take up growing space, I just love, love them growing in the garden out here. I've got some comfrey growing at the end of this row and this one and that one and they're finally starting to take off. They've been a little with the yellow leaves which was telling me they weren't really getting the nutrients that they need but now a lot of the the bigger newer leaves are looking you know like they should so I'm hoping their roots are getting deep enough so that they will get the nutrients 
and bring them up to the surface level. This one's doing a lot better now. I love their flowers, aren't they pretty? Out here in the strawberry patch, here's that squash that I showed you, that seed that had been mixed in with the, the uh, hay that was in with the goats. And I still don't know what kind of squash it is. These leaves are looking almost pumpkinish, so we'll see. Get some of these weeds. But I see something out here. <laughs> this lovely little red spot out in the middle of the hay field. Lovely little poppy. It's growing out here. Oh, and a bee. <laughs> and also with the purple blossoms from the alfalfa. I wonder if I'm near a nest. They're trying to distract me from it. Oh dear. I think I'd better move. <laughs> so from a distance, I saw this tree out here. I have one of these red ball things on it that's supposed to have a sticky spray on them to help catch bugs, but I saw this other red thing hanging from here. Check it out! We have a pear! <laughs> that's awesome. First fruits of our labor. Nice. Ooh, look at this one over here. This is an apple. I have to look and see what kind. What was it, two apples on this one? Let's see what kind it is. The Gravenstein, nice. Two Gravenstein apples this year, unless they fall off. <laughs> and this is our filbert tree, AKA hazelnut. And I was noticing on this the other day, it's gonna produce something for us too. There's the beginnings. Of course, this one over here, for some reason, just has tons of little apples on them. This is my favorite, yellow Lodi. I mean, I don't even want to count how many are on there. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably 20 to 30 apples on there. And I did thin a few off on some of these over here, but it might could do with a, a few more trimming off, culling. Some of the squash plants are starting to get their first true leaves. Now these are marigolds, uh, seeds that I planted. I have read that the marigold scent helps disguise the scent of the squash and hopefully will then um, detract the, uh, what is it, the squash bugs that come and destroy the, the squash vines and the potato, or the potatoes, the pumpkins, the squash. So I planted a whole bunch of these on each pile, hoping that the scent of those will help disguise the, the squash. And look at that Bermuda grass sneaking its way in. Ooh, -oh. <gasps> I pulled up a. <laughs> I think I'll leave that. And there's another squash growing up there. Right here on the edge of the pumpkin patch and on the edge of the hay field, we still have a corner of the fence here. Uh, we like to leave this up just for aesthetics and just kind of in memory of what it used to be. Anyway, I planted a Concord grape here last year and it'll eventually cover this fence. 
and become a nice, nice looking centerpiece of the field. <laughs> See those birds flying around? A major portion of those are magpies. There's about five or six of them sitting in our tree here. Trees. The weed trees, Russian olives. Some red clover. Of course, you guys know what red clover is good for. You pull these out and you suck on the ends. Suck on the ends and you get a little bit of nectar down in there. <laughs> Ooh, sweet. It's always a fun thing to do when you're in the in the field and you come across some red clover. Just have a little treat. It is starting to actually sprinkle out again, so I'd like to go get a few more shots, but it looks like, again, I won't probably be able to do much outside besides this little tour. I might have a project inside or two that I can work on, so uh, after I'm done with the rounds here, I will go inside and get something done. You can see this area of the marshy area just gets way overgrown thistles, but we have elderberry too. We've got blackberry. There's lots more elderberry right there. Russian olive trees. Uh-oh, somebody came through and wrecked my some of my elderberry. Well, who did that? That's disappointing. Hmm. wonder who went through there. Or what? Maybe it's a what? But look, elderberry blossoms. And blackberry blossoms. I just get so overgrown. This is, we had a pathway through here. You can see our tea posts and uh, had a fence around there for the goats that we never really made use of, but anyway, this was at one point cleared out enough that we could walk through there. And I'm seeing right up in there some more elderberry blossoms, if you can see that white stuff. But there's one more thing over here I wanted to show you, maybe a couple more things. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I think it's over here. Oh, I wanted to show you this tree here. This is one I brought from my old house and I can see the leaves are kind of getting some of that curl leaf going on. Anyway, it came with us from our old house and I wasn't even sure what it was. It came up from seed and lo and behold, maybe I've already shown you this, I don't remember. But you can see, I don't, can't go oh, here, maybe I can get these, there we go. It looks like it might be a plum tree. Pretty sure from the look of those fruit. So yay, some kind of plum tree. Don't even know what kind. <laughs> but one of my kids, I think, planted a pit somewhere around on the property and started growing a tree. So I brought it with us so we could see what it was. But right over here, I saw this plant growing and I thought, oh look, another elderberry. But then I was looking at the leaves, which down here, they looked kind of odd. I was thinking elderberry, but then I realized it is a walnut tree just growing right here in the middle of our marshy rainforest, or rainforest, marshy, uh, marshy area. So, yay, we have another walnut tree. I have a couple of the others that have grown up uh, over in our yard area that came up from squirrels planting the nuts. So. That'll be cool. I have the Carpathian walnut that I bought and planted, and then I have these, and I imagine these are black walnut. So we shall see when it comes down to it, but I'm pretty sure they're black walnut. So one more tree down in this area. And the ground here is pretty wet. And here, whoop, see that? It's pretty wet in here. But this other tree that I planted, if I can find it, I think it's over here. Uh, yep, it's been overwhelmed. I put these, these uh, logs around it to 
show where it is, but this is my little um, willow tree. Oh, look. <gasps> Ooh, look at that. I wonder if those are one of the edible kinds. Oh, they're all over that log. Oh my goodness. I'll have to look at that and see if those are the edible, like chicken of the woods or, or some such. There's one that grows on logs like that that are edible. Sweet. But this is my little willow tree and willows like the wet soil, so it should do really well here. It had been this big, but that froze out one year, but it came up from root again, so I still have my willow tree. Over in this area, the pasture grass has just gotten long. We didn't keep up with mowing. Uh, for a couple reasons, we, we thought we'd let it go more natural. We didn't realize it would get this tall. <laughs> But um, we also don't want to pay the gas for the mower to mow down here once a week. You know, that'd be, that adds up <laughs> these days. So there's, that's two reasons why we let it grow. But the, we had a big windstorm come through in here and it just knocked all this grass down. So now we can actually see our trees <laughs> above the grass, whereas before the, the grass was kind of... Uh, drowning them out and I have no idea where all of my blueberry bushes are. Uh, it's a pretty sad case down here right now with my blueberry bushes. So I might come down and dig them up at some point when I can find them and take them back up where I can keep a better eye on them for now. But there's another tree. I think this one's a cherry. This was a mystery one I also brought with us from our old house um, but I haven't seen any blossoms on it yet so not entirely sure what kind that is. But starting to sprinkle more, so I'm gonna head back up to the house and we'll get something going on inside. Okay, the rain is starting to come down a little bit heavier now, still a sprinkle, but uh, just I wanted to show you one couple more things before we head inside, just real quick here. So let's take a look here at the garden that is in the chicken coop area. You see that? And that, Ooh. and that, my beans are coming up. These are the green beans, the string beans that I planted on, I think it was day one, wasn't it? So they're starting to pop up out of the ground. Ah, oh, it's always so exciting. And then I was curious about the corn and look at that, corn. Corn. These right here. Not these. These are weeds. <laughs> oh, look at these here. Yay! It's always a sense of accomplishment. Look at all these popping up. There's even more than I saw just yesterday. Because I was going to do an update on these yesterday, but my battery ran out. So even more has popped up. So exciting. With the rain outside, I've decided to find something to do inside, as I've already mentioned. And I decided to do something with the honey berries that I just picked. I found a recipe that used just a little over the amount that I got. So I picked about a cup's worth. And then you can see I added some strawberries on the top. Those are also the strawberries I picked that day, some of them. And I found this recipe for microwave berry jam. And this is in Better Homes and Gardens. You can can. It's a fun play on words there. So this recipe calls for only one and a half to two and a quarter cups fresh or frozen berries of various kinds. And so with the one and a half, since I had the one cup of the honey berries, I just added enough strawberries to get up to the one and a half cup amount. Then we need three quarter cup sugar two teaspoons of lemon juice, and then it also calls for a quarter teaspoon of butter, but that's just to keep down the foam, and the foam on the jam is not something that bothers me, so I don't usually worry about adding the butter to take care of that foam. So what we're going to do is we're going to mash the berries down until we have about one cup of crushed berries. 
So I have here a ha nifty little crusher. So I'm just gonna do it right in this measuring cup. You can see. So there, we're right about the one cup amount. So, looks good. All right, now we're going to add the berries to a microwave safe bowl. So I have this little bowl here. So that calls for a two quart bowl. And I think that's probably about what that size is. Might be one and a half quart, but big enough all the same. Okay, then we're going to add the sugar. And I'm using an organic vegan sugar. And then add in the lemon juice as well. Okay, there's one. And two. Now it says to cover it. I have some cling wrap here. Now I've never made jam in the microwave before, so this is a new experience for me. I've never tried this recipe. So this is going to be interesting to see how well this turns out. So we microwave it on high for eight to nine minutes or until mixture thickens and is reduced to about one cup, stirring every two minutes. So I'm going to set the microwave timer for two minutes and then stir, two minutes and then stir until I reach eight minutes or so or until the mixture is thick enough. This has been eight minutes, so let's take a look at the consistency. 
So let's see how it is for thickness so far. Might put it in for that last minute. They said eight to nine minutes, and this is at eight minutes. Well, that's nice and thick. Side on, leave the cat alone. As it cools, it will thicken up even more, but I think I want to do it for that one last minute just to give it a little bit more thickness. I'm just going to take this out and then I have a jar here to go ahead and put it in. So you want a jar that's going to hold about a cup's worth. I think this might be a little bit more, but I wasn't sure exactly if it would be one cup when it was done cooking. So I just wanted to have a little extra big jar just in case. And it doesn't really matter anyway. I'm not going to be canning it. It's just going to go straight into the fridge. So it doesn't matter if it's mm, com if it's completely full. Oh, that's nice and thick. Yeah. Thick enough anyway. Okay. I have a funnel here. Kind of warm. I think I'll use this. So there we have it. Again, a little bit bigger jar than I needed, but it'll work. So we can just put a lid on that and stick it in. Well, I'll probably let it cool down a little bit first. But then I'll put it in the fridge to eat later. So even though we didn't get to planting any plants today out on the farm, part of being on the farm is taking care of your harvest. And even though it's June, you can see I already had something to harvest. You need to take care of it. So sometimes work on the farm means working in the kitchen. So I'm going to give this a taste test, see how it is. I've never had honeyberry jam before, so... Mmm, that is tasty. Very delicious. Very reminiscent of blueberry jam. But it's got those strawberries in it too. Ooh, and I can taste that now. Mmm, good stuff. So thanks for joining me here on day eight of my June on the Farm series. We will see you Sunday. Today is Friday, so taking tomorrow off for Sabbath. So we will see you Sunday. Toodaloo!